felt like that struck like right there in the uh, road. Yeah. All right, well, howdy, folks, and welcome to another adventure. This time, a little bit further southeast of Oregon in our favorite state in the U.S. That's right, Utah. Currently topping off fuel. Abigail's getting a belly full over here, and we got some big storms rolling in. So I'm kind of going to sit right here under this cover for just a minute because there's some big hail coming. Motorcycles, like, yeah, I'm gonna park it right here. Right here. Yeah, he has no rain gear. Yeah. Oh, that was good. topping off our fuel and waiting out a nasty severe storm, we left the main roads behind and headed into the mountains to meet up with some friends who had driven all the way from California. We've been trying to meet up with these awesome folks for several years now, so we were all excited that it had finally come together. Caroline was especially stoked knowing that she would have some other big kids to play with too. We interrupt your regularly scheduled adventure for a word from Lifestyle Overland. Hey folks, I'm Kevin with Lifestyle Overland and I'm bringing this YouTube video to you with zero mid-roll ads except for my own now this is a bit of an experiment so i hope you guys like it and if it's effective i'll do more videos without all those annoying advertisements what do i ask in return it's very simple if you like this video like it if you're not subscribed subscribe and hit that notification bell and if you have any comments or questions post them down below helps us big time we now return you to our family travel chaos enjoy wow yeah, that's him. <laughs> Here, Abigail. Hi, hey, buddy. What's up, buddy? Just as Abigail's patience began to wear thin, we found our friends and began to set up camp for the night. All right, so I'm being rude for just a minute to our uh, friends, but it's Jason, premiere night, so got Starlink hooked up over there, chatting with everybody for a minute. Then we'll get camp set up. All right. Done with the premiere. Got someone else joining us. AJ, photo runner. You've probably seen him on Instagram. He's just passing through. But now I gotta figure out where to set up camp. And if you notice, I know you have a lot of questions. It's been confusing lately. We do not have the trailer yet. The trailer that you've seen in the videos up until now was just a loner that's actually owned by Artie and Stacy. We were just borrowing it, so we returned it. Our trailer is being built and it's almost ready. It was so close. We really had hoped to have it on this trip, but there's some special things. We're kind of high maintenance customers that Artie and Stacy are taking care of. I'm just kidding, but there's some fun stuff that we're doing on the build. So now we're having to go one more night, one more run, I should say, with the utility style trailer. So there's only one rooftop tent. I have a plan. Stick with me. It's chaotic. We're temporarily changing our name from Lifestyle Overland to Hot Mess Overland for this run and you'll understand why because it's just it's eclectic we're looking forward to our trailer our new trailer trust me it's gonna be nice all right so the reason we're down to one rooftop tent is i had to take the other rooftop tent down to expedition trailers for some special treatment i can't give away too much yet but got the good old backup gazelle tent now if you remember a couple years back we borrowed one from my friend keith <laughs> Yeah, this is a bit different than what we're used to. And loved it. As far as ground tents go, it's one of the best options out there. So we bought one just for backup and it's coming in clutch right now. If you're wondering why this is the first time you're seeing it, it's because it's the first time we've used it. Far cry from our uh, old school Coleman, huh? 
we're no strangers to the gazelle stuff because when we were in Alaska we carried one of their bug tents right and it was awesome And that's pretty much it. It's the easiest round tent I've ever used. Sorry, I'm about to shut this screen. Mosquitoes are following me in here. I forgot how cool this tent is. Just call Artie and Stacy tell them, never mind, we're good. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, if we were like base camping, this would, that would be one thing. All right, so the setup is, Sarah and Abigail are going to sleep in here and Caroline and I are going to sleep up in the eye camper. Mostly because we only have this twin size air mattress. It doesn't sleep too very easily. Hey folks, Kevin here again. Just real quick, if you'd like to support what we do, you can head to overland.pro. That's right, overland.pro for Overland Provision, which is a store that's run by us with our merch, several other creators' merch, and some of our favorite gear that we've been testing over the years. That's it. Back to the show. Been a minute since I've blown one of these up. It's nap time, but she doesn't want to nap. So I'm gonna walk her around for a bit while Sarah gets supper going. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get you to sleep. What do you think, ECP? Abigail and I are exploring slash trying to take a nap. We found a magical river because look, flowing river, flowing river, and no flowing river. It's all coming out of the ground right there. <laughs> That's a good flow. What do you think about that? Is it pretty cool? Let's see, it's completely dry up here. Rushing River. Our stroll to the woods in hopes for a nap was only slightly successful due to some intensive teething, so we made our way back to camp to check on dinner. Like? I'll just have one. If I don't drip burger juice all over Abigail. <laughs> well. Oh yeah. <laughs> when you can't get back east to Tennessee for crystals, you just make them yourself. Mm. Just you wait, Abigail. One day, one day, this will all be yours. <laughs> really good. That a winner? That's yeah, that's the one. Okay. 100%. That's so a touch cool. of mustard and the... Mm. Yeah. I never yeah. would have thought to make it like that. It's like comfort food. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally. Well, it is currently 10 after 5. We've been up for 4 hours. Something like that. Whatever 1.30 is. Whatever the math is. So since 1.30. <sighs> Abigail, we love you, girl. But this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> She's like... I no comment. Whatever. Do you have any comments for the camera? Would you like to say something? Would you like to explain yourself? Yeah. It's a good thing you're cute. <sighs> we'll get there. Eventually. The next morning, we decided to release Abigail 
back into the wild where she came from. <laughs> I'm just kidding. After some Tylenol, snuggles, and a couple hours of sleep, we got some coffee steeping in the French press and made our way to the nearby stream. Traveling and camping with a baby has its challenges, especially when the teething kicks in, but we're learning to roll with the punches and do our best to stay positive. And pro tip, it helps to have a big dose of humor when exhaustion sets in. It also helps to remember that these sleepless nights only last for a while, and one day, it is very likely we will rewatch these moments with a grown Abigail who will hopefully have her own little camper keeping her company late into the night as well. All right, all packed down, ready to hit the trail. Rough morning, rough, rough morning. So finally got Abigail to sleep around four o'clock. She fell asleep on me in the GX. And then Sarah called up into the tent with Caroline to get a few more snoozes in. So basically I've been up since 1.30 a.m. I was able to get Abby moved over to a car seat around eight o'clock or so, so I could get out and make some coffee, but <sighs> almost decided to go home. Just pull the plug, because this is now two nights in the row and we have this issue. So. She's got some new teeth coming in, making this a little difficult. But we're gonna push on. We're hoping, hoping tonight it's gonna be a little bit better, so. All right, let's check in with Corey. You did a little more scouting on this. Yep. What's the plan today? Plan today is to go about that way, <laughs> 6.2 miles as okay. the crow flies. Mm -hmm. And we're checking out, oh, what's the name of the place? It's a secret it's a cave. Secret. I can't remember what it's called, but 6.2 miles that way. Yeah. Cool, lots to check out and see. Let's see what we found. Okay. What you doing, ladies? Disney. Are you prepping her for tablet time? Yep. Oh boy. Did you know that they shut down 317 miles of off-road trails in Moab, Utah? This is becoming a big problem. If you'd like to support the fight against shutting down our access, then head to sharetrails.org and sign up where you can help ensure that our public land is accessible for generations to come. Strange having someone else fly the drone. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What is that? This is the um, DJI Mini 3 Pro. That's nice size right there. It, this this remote, That's a game changer. RC. I could launch it so fast. I mean, it's in the sky in like 60 no seconds. No fighting cables. No fighting nothing. After our short climb to this incredible view, we began to take a closer look at our surroundings and found that we had inadvertently climbed to the rim of a small, ancient volcano. Through the trees, we could even see a trail leading down into the crater. And so, we began picking our way along the extremely tight forest service road to see if we could make our way down to the epicenter for lunch. Only a 
hundred yards down the trail, even Abigail was questioning our decision to take a full-size truck and our trailer down this tight road. I guess she's been paying closer attention than we thought. made it to the spur, we tried shoehorning the big tundra through a couple tight switchbacks lined with aspens, but it was clear that the big frame, heavy truck, and soft soil wasn't going to make this feasible. So before things got too ticklish and required a chainsaw, we decided to back out of the situation. Bring your mirrors in and straight back. Uh, give it a little more uh, passenger and back. Hold up, hold up. That moved the whole thing. Yeah, come forward. I'll get out of your way. It's a little soft right here. Oh, you're sliding a little bit. That's much better. Yeah, go ahead and give yourself a fresh footing here. Even still, it took the better part of 10 minutes to find just the right angle to get back on track without removing mirrors and scheduling a trip to the body shop. As we discussed with our patrons on our recent Coffee with Kevin session, I think that we've decided it's time. It's time for something with a little bit more interior space. And I'm sure you guys have seen this coming. We've been considering a full-size option in the future. We know there will be a trade-off, and this is a good example of those one or two percent of trails that will no longer be on the table for us. With every platform, there is always a trade-off. Smaller size means less power, less space, but more mobility. Bigger footprint means better payload, towing, and leg space, but a few less places to explore. For us, the small trade-off at this point in our journey would be worth it for a bit more comfort and space. But we'll make sure our forerunner, Silver, is always on call for those trips with some tighter clearances. So now the question is, <laughs> do we go on or do we go back? That looks pretty wide right there. We're almost to the end, actually. And I think it's pretty wide. It's going to be pretty wide that way. Okay. I can go explore and Yeah, we can do that. See. <laughs> All right. Since the bottom of the crater wasn't on the menu today, we had a quick lunch on the rim and then headed off to another interesting point on the map to explore, but this time on foot. This cave is technically called a lava tube. And if you've been riding along for a while and paying attention to my soothing voiceover, then you know by now that a lava tube is formed when a stream of hot molten lava cools on its outer perimeter, creating a solid tube of lava rock. The lava inside continues to flow, and occasionally the upstream source gets cut off and the contents empty out of the tube, creating a void like you see here. This way. Look at the ceiling. This is a good one, y'all. Yeah. That's weird. Like, popped out. Just a rock that, like, oh, popped out of the ground. Same thing there. That's weird. Maybe some seismic activity. Let's go back there. Okay, I'm gonna see the bats. That's like the only thing you came in here for. They usually go way back in the back to get away from people. Like the end. Yeah. I heard that. Did, uh, did you hear it squeak? Yes. How could he get lost in this thing? Oh, look at the roots coming through. Uh huh. Oh, that's cool. back there. This is the probably the easiest lava tube I've been in. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, it gets really muddy over here, so go right. Oh yeah. Then 
We've explored lava tubes in California, Arizona, Oregon, and Utah these past 10 years. But every time we get to crawl inside one, we're simply amazed. They're also a great place for kids, since they're a bit more predictable and safer for them since they rarely branch off or get confusing like limestone caves. Just make sure to bring multiple sources of light and maybe some footwear for unexpected mud. This is very sticky. Oh, you hear it sucking around my foot. Okay. <laughs> We're all gonna come out barefooted, don't you? Dad. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We got more socks. Good shot. What? I don't get any more. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy on your soul. I just don't keep the camera in the mud. Right. Oh. Ooh, well, you like you got some new shoes there, girl. Yeah. Come over this way. Come on, stand by. You're oh, yeah. good. I'm clear. Now your booty and you're clear. What can I do with my shoes? That was I yeah, what oh. do you have to do with the washing machine? <laughs> hey, me again. One last time. If you've enjoyed our show, if you've been following us for a long time and you want to support what we do, then head to lso.link forward slash support where you can sign up for monthly support and get access to all kinds of fun bonus material like ad-free videos, early releases, coffee with Kevin sessions where I sit here and talk about a lot of off the cuff topics and not to mention all that gorgeous GPS information so that you can plan your next adventure. All right, that's it for our annoying ads on this video. Enjoy the rest of the story. All right, well, we're doing something we don't usually do. We're camping before four o'clock and we didn't drive on into the night trying to find epic camps. There are other people camping within a few miles of us. I know that's not how we usually operate, but we're exhausted. Last night was rough. So we're gonna chill here. Let's get camp set up. Must be 